Does early detection of ADHD really matter? And if so, what are the benefits of getting the diagnosis early in a child's life? Find out right here in this YouTube video. If you're new to our channel, welcome. I'm Dana Kay, a board certified health and nutrition practitioner, and I specialize in working with families of kids with ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. We talk all things ADHD here. We discuss holistic, natural ways to reduce symptoms in children. If you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now so you don't miss any future videos. Now, ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder that's categorized by patterns of inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity that are more frequent and severe than typically observed in individuals at a comparable level of development. There are a lot of misconceptions about ADHD. Some people, for instance, assume it just means a child is overly energetic. But the truth is, it's more than just being energetic. ADHD significantly impacts a person's ability to function daily. And current statistics show that ADHD is a common condition affecting a substantial number of children and adults worldwide, highlighting the necessity of awareness and understanding. But many of these individuals are not being diagnosed at an early age, especially if their ADHD does not present in the more obvious ways. Now, girls in particular are often not diagnosed until an older age because of the ways that their ADHD often presents. So what are the benefits of early detection? Now, the first benefit is improved diagnosis accuracy. Now, early detection of ADHD, it can lead to more accurate diagnoses by distinguishing ADHD symptoms from other behaviors that might appear similar. This helps avoid the mislabeling of children, which can lead to an inappropriate management approach. A second benefit of early detection is that parents and teachers then have the ability to create tailored educational plans. You know, recognizing ADHD early allows for the development of customized educational strategies that really cater specifically to the needs of individuals with ADHD, which will help them to achieve their potential in the educational system. And finally, a third benefit of early detection is reduced complications. Now, early intervention can prevent the development of secondary issues like anxiety, depression, which are more common in those with untreated ADHD. So by getting that early diagnosis, parents can get a head start on reducing any challenging symptoms, hopefully before any secondary issues have a chance to arise. So those three reasons are why early detection is beneficial. But how does early detection even happen? If a parent suspects ADHD, what do they need to do? Okay, so traditionally, kids are diagnosed with ADHD through a process that often begins with parents or teachers noticing signs of hyperactivity, impulsivity, or inattention that seem just way more than their peers. You know, that, that excessive and consistent that's across different settings like home and at school. This is what happened with my son. You know, they may then seek an evaluation from a healthcare professional who specializes in childhood developmental disorders. This evaluation usually includes an assessment involving clinical interviews, behavior rating scales completed by parents and teachers, and direct observation of the child at multiple intervals. But one problem I have seen over and over again with traditional ways of diagnosing children is an ADHD misdiagnosis. In my experience, and also backed by insights from genetic expert Kashif Khan, who's the founder of the DNA company, as per an interview that I did with him on the Soaring Child podcast, go and check that out if you haven't seen it, only about 3% of people diagnosed with chronic conditions, including ADHD, were actually born with them. There are actual chemical imbalances. There are actual depressed people out there. That is less than 3% of what we deal with today. The majority is chronic. They weren't born with it. They didn't have it. That means that a staggering 97% of children diagnosed with ADHD might be exhibiting symptoms due to other external factors in their lifestyle or their environment rather than a congenital condition. 
Avoiding an ADHD misdiagnosis and utilizing the proper diagnostic tools is paramount in ensuring children receive the right care and interventions. While it's widely accepted that ADHD cannot be cured in the traditional sense, it is crucial to understand that the symptoms can be significantly reduced and not every diagnosis is definitive. So in my opinion, one of the primary drivers behind ADHD is inflammation. Inflammation in the body can create ADHD-like symptoms in children who don't actually have ADHD and can exacerbate symptoms in those that do have ADHD. So identifying and reducing inflammation is really a key focus. There are several diagnostic challenges that I feel often arise, including symptom overlap. Many ADHD symptoms are really non-specific and can be present in other conditions, which can really complicate the diagnostic process. The next one is bias and subjectivity. Reports from parents or teachers can sometimes be biased or subjective. You know, that ensures objective and standardized assessments are put into place because this can help mitigate this. Then we've got internal, environmental, and social influences, factors like home environment, diet, inflammation, other underlying stresses, and stress levels can really influence symptoms and behaviors making it extra challenging to diagnose accurately. So to avoid a misdiagnosis, a comprehensive approach is necessary, but sadly, this comprehensive approach is rarely followed. This approach should include the following, in my opinion. Firstly is a detailed evaluation, really collecting thorough information about the child's behavior across various settings, home, school, and social environments. I think that's absolutely essential. This feedback should include feedback from parents, teachers, other caregivers to really gain a holistic perspective. Number two is a medical and family history. Understanding the child's medical history and any family tendencies towards ADHD or other conditions can really help identify patterns and underlying issues. Number three is assessing and adjusting current diet. Removing highly inflammatory foods such as gluten, dairy, soy, excessive amounts of sugar, artificial flavors and colors, and inflammatory oils can have a significant impact on reducing ADHD symptoms. Next up is functional lab testing. These tests can really uncover underlying stresses in the body, such as leaky gut, parasites, food sensitivities, bacterial overgrowth, vitamin or mineral deficiencies, environmental toxins, and so much more. Then we've got psychological and behavioral assessments, really utilizing those standardized tools such as the Connors rating scale and the Vanderbilt ADHD diagnostic rating scale really help measure symptom severity and frequency in a structured manner. Number six is differentiating conditions. Really, it's vital to distinguish ADHD from other conditions with overlapping symptoms like anxiety, depression, sleep disorders and learning disabilities so you can avoid misdiagnosis. Each day the ADHD persists is another day of impaired mental, physical and social development. Children only get one childhood and impaired development follows them for the rest of their lives, negatively affecting their brain function, their ability to learn, the ability to make friends, those emotional regulation skills, communication, academic performance, and even their physical health. Children don't grow out of ADHD. At best, they can learn to manage or cope with it, but the impaired brain function is still there. More likely, the ADHD gets worse over time. This is unless we do something about it. You know, a blanket one-size-fits-all prescription or even diagnosis doesn't address what each unique child needs, and a guesswork approach doesn't work either. We waste too much money and more importantly, we can lose months or even years for our children's valuable development time. That's why what in the work that I do at the ADHD Thrive Institute, we really recommend a personalized approach where, you know, children aren't just given a blanket one size fits all medication or plan, but are instead given bio individual plans suited for their individual needs. Now, let's say you've already gotten an ADHD misdiagnosis. What now? 
Maybe after hearing what I just shared about how many kids are misdiagnosed, you're wondering if your child's diagnosis is accurate, or maybe you still feel like it's accurate, but haven't taken any steps to mitigate symptoms or reduce those symptoms and are wondering where to go now, where to go next. There are actually lots of options for you. When my son was first diagnosed, I was really only told about one specific way to manage symptoms, medication. Now, I want to say I am not against medication in all situations, but it should not be the only option parents are told about, not when there are other more natural strategies available for families to consider. Now, in the next couple of minutes, I wanted to highlight just a few of these natural strategies. First, and in my opinion, the foundation of any strategy is nutrition. Proper nutrition is vital. You know, eliminating inflammatory foods like gluten, dairy, soy, artificial flavors and colors, and then feeding that body, replacing them with whole micronutrient rich foods, healthy fats, and quality proteins like grass-fed and wild-caught options can make a significant difference in managing ADHD symptoms. Check out our videos linked below for more in-depth discussions on nutrition for ADHD. A second natural strategy to consider is behavioral therapy. Behavioral interventions can be really beneficial too, although I would definitely recommend starting with nutrition as this is the foundation for everything. Behavioral therapy can improve focus, organization, and can reduce impulsivity and hyperactivity. Another option to consider is supplementation. While we won't do a deep dive here in this video, certain supplements can support ADHD management, especially when they are paired with other natural changes like nutrition changes, like the one I mentioned just a few seconds ago. We have detailed videos in the description below that cover this topic extensively, but I will say one thing. Remember, you can't supplement your way out of a poor diet or a body riddled with inflammation. So it's important to adjust the diet and then you might consider supplementation. It's also ideal, if possible, to do some functional lab testing first before supplementing because these tests will show you exactly what deficiencies or underlying malfunctions your child might be dealing with. Check out the video description for more information about uh, both functional lab testing and supplements for ADHD. And finally for today, a fourth ADHD management strategy is to work directly with the school staff to support your child in the management of their ADHD symptoms. Schools play a really essential role in supporting children with ADHD through specialized educational services or accommodations, which can be critical for their academic success. I have a video where I go into more detail about IEPs and 504, so check out the video description for that link. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, one of the benefits you know, of early detection is that an official diagnosis can help you get support from the school. A diagnosis is not always necessary, in my opinion, if you're planning to try natural strategies to reduce symptoms like, for instance, nutrition and supplementation. But a diagnosis is often necessary to qualify for specialized educational plans, such as an individual education program or a 504 plan. These plans are designed to provide accommodations that help students with disabilities to succeed in the school environment. Without a formal diagnosis, schools may not legally recognize the child's need for these modifications, which can include additional testing time, altered classroom seating, or tailored homework assignments. So obtaining a professional diagnosis can be an important step in securing the necessary support to ensure educational success for a child with ADHD. Along with school support, I'm going to give you a couple of other avenues families can use to get support. First, there are community and online resources. There are many resources available, both locally and online, including support groups that can offer advice and a community for families navigating ADHD challenges. I actually created a free Facebook group for parents of kids with ADHD. It's called the ADHD Parent Nutrition Support Group on Facebook. I'll add the link in the video description, so check that out if you'd like to join. It's full of parents just like you who are looking for ideas on how to best support their kids with ADHD. Check it out at the link below. Additionally, there is also professional help. 
regular consultations with healthcare professionals, holistic providers, or nutritionists specializing in ADHD can be really helpful to stay on top of the condition and adjust management plans as needed. Okay, to wrap up, I want to remind you of the three benefits of early and accurate detection of ADHD. Number one, improved diagnosis accuracy. Number two, tailored educational plans. And number three, reduced complications. Recognizing ADHD early and implementing effective management strategies can drastically improve outcomes for children and adults with ADHD. If you suspect ADHD in yourself or your child, consulting with a professional can provide the necessary guidance and diagnosis. My team actually offers free ADHD Thrive breakthrough calls that you can book using the link in the video description below. So check that out if you're interested. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you have any additional benefits to add to the ones that I've shared in this video? I'd love you to share your comments or your thoughts below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content and share this video to help educate others about ADHD. Thanks for watching as always and stay tuned for more videos that can help you or someone you know live better with ADHD.